Hello everybody and welcome to this video which will explain the writing process. This process will help us to break down the task into manageable steps. But first of all, let's consider why we actually need a writing process. Well, first of all, it enables us to use our time more efficiently. Under the pressure of the exam, it can be difficult to manage your time, but if you have a process to follow, it's going to help you to get your answer written in time. Secondly, it helps ensure your writing is logical and organized. A big part of the marking criteria is coherence and cohesion, which relates to writing logically and being organized. Having a process to follow that makes sure you write logically is a big advantage to you. Thirdly, it means that you will have time left at the end to check your answer. Remember that uh, accuracy is important in terms of your spelling, punctuation and grammar. So having time to check at the end is crucial. Fourthly, it can help reduce your stress levels and make you more confident because you know what you're going to do um, as soon as you see the question and you can feel confident that you can write a good answer. Uh, next, it also gives you a system that you can practice over and over again. So you're not just um, trying to do lots of different questions from the internet or from books with no real idea of how you should actually be writing your answers. You've got a set system, a set plan that you can use time and time again. And this gives you a clear starting point. This means you will know what to do as soon as you get into the exam and as soon as you see your task one question. So this stops you from being confused and stops you from wasting time. And finally, it breaks the task down into smaller, more manageable steps or tasks, which, which make it seem more manageable and easier to tackle. If you have no plan, if you just have a vague idea of what you're going to do, it can feel quite overwhelming when you have a uh, complicated letter to write and you're not sure where to start. But having a process will enable you to write a nicely organized and logical letter every time. And here is that process with approximate timings as well. So the first thing you're going to do is analyze the question and plan your answers and ideas. And this should take you no more than four minutes. The second thing you'll do is write paragraph one. And this will be a very short paragraph, probably just one sentence saying what the purpose of the letter is. And that also includes the salutation. That just means the dear sir part or dear John or whoever you're writing to. So that's a very quick paragraph to write. 
Paragraph two will cover the first bullet point that you have to write about. And these paragraphs should take about four minutes to write or thereabouts. Um, if you go over this time, um, it just means you'll have a little less time checking at the end or you might write one of the other paragraphs a bit faster. So your third paragraph will cover bullet point two from the question and paragraph four will naturally cover uh, bullet point three from the question and include the signing off as well, which is simply writing the yours sincerely or yours faithfully or best wishes. Um, and that should leave you with two to three minutes at the end to check your answer. So that is the writing process that we will be looking at and following uh, throughout the remainder of this course. So now we're going to go through each of those steps in turn and I will show you exactly what you need to do for each step. So the first step is how is analyzing and planning your answer. So this is how you do it. Uh, first, you're going to underline or circle keywords and information. So um, you want to underline or highlight what the topic is, who you are writing to, and any keywords from the bullet points. So for this question here, you can see that we have uh, underlined that uh, a friend. A friend is important because that's who we're writing to. And they're going to look after a house and a pet uh, while you are on holiday. So write a letter to your friend. Again, it's really important who we're writing to. And in your letter, you need to give contact details. So we mustn't miss that out. You must give the contact details. You must give instructions about how to care for your pet and you need to describe other household duties and as normal you have 20 minutes to write the task and you're recommended to spend 150 words uh, so this should be very quick for you to do um, to identify what the topic is who you're writing to and keywords from the bullet points that's the very first step you need to do. Just try and make sure you've understood the question. So take a moment, have a breather, uh, make sure you've understood the question and that you're nice and calm at this point of the writing process. The next step is to decide if you need to write a formal or an informal letter. Now, the key here is to remember that if you're writing to a friend, then it is an informal letter that you need to write. If you're writing to anybody else, you're going to write a formal letter. So don't worry about semi-formal or semi-formal language. That just confuses things and um, we want to avoid confusion at all costs. So we're just going to write um, an informal letter to a friend and if it's not a friend we're going to use a formal style because you won't lose marks for writing in a formal style even if it's a semi-formal situation but you would lose marks if you wrote in an informal style in a semi-formal situation so the easiest way to stop us from making that mistake is to write informally to a friend and then formally to everybody else. Uh, so that is the approach that this course uh, recommends. So that means we're not writing semi-formal letters. Um, so that's one less thing to have to worry about. So this example here, it tells us twice that uh, we're writing to a friend so we can't miss it here it will always tell you who you are writing to in the instructions so once you're clear about 
what the question is and the keywords in it and you've decided what type of letter you're going to write, formal or informal. The next thing to do is to come up with some ideas to answer the question. Now, um, the important thing with your ideas is to be relevant. Make sure your ideas exactly answer the bullet points. Make sure they directly relate to the bullet points. Don't drift off topic. If you're having difficulty, um, pretend you are that person. Pretend you are that person in the letter and how you would think and feel. Um, that will often give you ideas to write about. Also, my favorite is to use examples from real life. Um, think about any situations um, from your own life or from any of your friends or family's lives, any of their situations that they've told you about that link to the question, they can be really good sources of ideas to write about. And finally, just be creative. Uh, it is okay to lie. The examiners um, know that this is essentially not true. So you can lie, be creative, just make sure you're relevant to what you're being asked to do. And remember, you do not have to be entertaining. You do not have to be clever. You do not have to be funny. You do not have to be original. That will not score you higher marks. So this takes the pressure off you. Your ideas don't have to be amazing. They just have to be simple and related to the bullet points and that's it. Now, what you need to do is to write down next to the bullet points on the question paper, two to three ideas for each point. Uh, if you only have one idea for each point, this will not be enough to develop your paragraph. So each paragraph needs to be three to four sentences long. So you need two to three ideas to do that. So uh, here for this question, um, the first thing we have to do is give contact details for when you are away. So uh, naturally that would mean giving a phone number, a hotel address from staying in a hotel, an email, and social media might be ways that they could contact me. So I've got four things there to mention in that first paragraph. Uh, for the second bullet point, uh, this one's about instructions. And it says how to care for your pet. Now, this is interesting because it doesn't tell you what the pet is. So that gives you some uh, license to be creative. So I'm going to say that it's a dog. Uh, because from my own experience, we've had to have our dogs taken care of whilst we've been on holiday. So for me, it's an example from real life. Um, so my dog, need, his name was Josh, lovely little dog, needed feeding three times a day. And I like to have him uh, walked once a day in the park nearby. And he liked to drink a lot of water. So his water always needed, his water bowl always needed keeping full. So simple ideas from my own life give me lots to write about in that paragraph. And then the third bullet point, we need to describe other household duties. So again, take them from my uh, real life. Um, we've asked people in the past to collect mail from our mailbox. Um, so it doesn't build up um, and run out of space of place to store the mail. Uh, we, we have asked neighbours to take in the milk. We have a milkman that delivers milk to us. So uh, we can't have that left outside. Um, and we also have a lot of flowers in our garden. So it's nice if somebody can water those for us. So all of those ideas, again, very simple, taken from my real life. And I've written them down next to the bullet points so I don't have to think of them again. I've got them there to quickly look at uh, later when I come to write that paragraph. Now we are nearly ready to start writing, um, but just quickly, you need to 
refresh in your mind what the structure of your letter is going to be. So you're only going to write about the purpose, so why you're writing the letter, and about the three bullet points. That means you're writing four paragraphs in the same order as the bullet points are given. And you're not going to include any information that is not relevant. So the structure looks like this. So you're going to have your greeting, which is basically dear, dear whoever you're writing to, and that works for formal and informal. Then paragraph one is your purpose, and you take that straight from the question. Um, you can uh, paraphrase the purpose of the letter uh, from the question. Paragraph two will be covering your ideas for the bullet point one. Paragraph three will be using your ideas to cover bullet point two. And paragraph four will be using your ideas to cover bullet point three. And then you're going to sign off um, with perhaps yours sincerely, yours faithfully, um, or even kind regards, or even best wishes. Um, and there'll be another video covering how to sign on and off of letters later in the course. But that is the structure that you're going to use. Now I want to make an important point about the topic sentences that you use in your letter. Remember a topic sentence is the first sentence of any paragraph that you write. And in this letter our topic sentence is going to make it very clear what this paragraph is about. That will mean that the examiner knows what bullet point we are covering and this will help ensure our answer is logical and answers the question directly. Now, to do that, we can use words from the bullet point or from the question to show which point we are covering. It's even better if you use synonyms or paraphrasing of the words in the question. So, let's have a look at um, the four topic sentences that I'm going to use to write this letter to answer this question about our uh, uh, pet and somebody taking care of our house. So remember paragraph one is the purpose of the letter so you need to make it clear why you're writing. So this one I'm going to write dear, dear John or whoever it is thanks for agreeing to help here are the instructions regarding how to take care of my house and dog whilst I'm away. So, um, the purpose of the letter is very clear. It's to give them instructions regarding how to take care of my house and dog. And that is very clear that that is the purpose of the letter. Um, the second paragraph covers bullet point one and it should be about the contact details. So, should you need to get in touch, my contact details are as follows. That very clearly relates to that bullet point. We've used the same words, contact details. So, we, the examiner will know that we're directly answering that bullet point. And the rest of the paragraph will go on to explain about those contact details. The third paragraph I'm going to write is uh, about giving instructions about how to care for our pet. So uh, that reads, in order to look after my dog Benji adequately, you will need to. So uh, we've used the phrase look after, uh, which is a paraphrase for, the, for how to care for. So the examiner will know that that topic sentence directly links to that bullet point and the rest of the paragraph will explain how to do that. And the final paragraph um, needs to be about describing other household duties. So 
This sentence starts, there are a few other chores that need completing, such as. So chores essentially means household duties. So using that paraphrase and synonym, um, the examiner will know we're directly answering that point and we're also showing a range of vocabulary um, so that we can score more highly for lexical resource. Um, if you can't, if you don't know any different words to ha household duties, if you don't know the word chores, for example, um, you, could, you can just use those words household duties. It's better to do that than to use an inaccurate synonym or paraphrase. So, um, that is how to write your topic sentences. Of course, you're not going to write them separately, uh, like I have here. You're not going to write them first. You're, you're going to write each paragraph one after the other. But I just wanted to show you how to write your topic sentences for each paragraph first. So, Writing the topic sentence is just the starting point of your paragraphs, but you need to develop your paragraphs fully. And you need to aim for 50 words per, per paragraph, um, apart from the very first paragraph, which is explaining the purpose of your letter. That will just be one sentence. Um, you will need to write around three sentences for each of the paragraphs covering the bullet points. Um, one sentence is not enough. You will not be developing your answer and you will um, only get a low band score um, if you just write one sentence for your paragraphs. This is a big mistake that students make. They think that if they just write one sentence that covers the bullet point, then they've done what they need to do. That is incorrect. You need to fully develop your points. Um, so that is why you need two to three ideas to explain in your paragraph. Then you'll be writing three sentences or four sentences perhaps, and you will be developing your answer more fully. So you just need to make sure that you stay on topic in your paragraphs um, and that you're logical about what you write about uh, or creative um, so long as it links back to the bullet points. Between each paragraph you need to leave a line so leave a full blank line between your paragraphs. This makes sure that the examiner will be able to clearly see where one paragraph ends and the next one begins and that's really important. Um, so all of these Aspects are important for your coherence and cohesion score, uh, making sure you're writing a letter that logically answers all the points and is organized in a very logical way um, where one idea covers one bullet point and another set of ideas covers another bullet point. Now let's take a look at a model answer to the question that we've been analysing and it starts with Dear John and I've made up the name here, the letters to a friend, so you can simply make up the name. I've then started with the following uh, short paragraph, it reads Thanks for agreeing to help. Here is some useful information which should help you take care of my house and Benji whilst I'm away. So this clearly says what the purpose of the letter is. That leads us to the second paragraph, which covers the first bullet point of the question. And it reads, Firstly, should you need to get in touch, my contact details are as follows. You can call me anytime on 01789 564 3254. You could also message me on Facebook, as I am usually online all the time. Or you could contact my hotel directly, which is the Hilton Hotel in downtown Bangkok. It has a website with contact information if the other options don't work. So here, notice that the topic sentence links directly back to the bullet point, And the remainder of the paragraph 
adds a few details to the contact details that we need to give. So I've mentioned that I'm usually online all the time. I've mentioned uh, the exact location of the hotel and that it has uh, a website where you could get the details if needed. So just by adding a few more details of my own to my original idea, you can develop a nice paragraph. The second bullet point is now covered in this third paragraph here. And again, the first topic sentence here outlines um, the main purpose of the paragraph and links it to the bullet point. And it reads, in order to look after my dog Benji adequately, you will need to feed him twice a day in the morning and the evening. The food is in the cupboard under the stairs and he simply needs two large handfuls from both of the bags there. His water bowl needs to be kept filled up all the time as he drinks a lot and it would be great if you could walk him through the woods if you get chance. So what I've done here is take my original ideas about how to look after the dog and uh, add some details to that. So where is the food kept and how much he needs? Um, and I've also asked if you could take the dog for a walk through the woods. So again, by adding some simple extra details, you can develop a nice body paragraph of three sentences or more. And the final paragraph here, which answers the third bullet point, reads, There are a few other chores that need completing, if you wouldn't mind. The postman comes twice a day, so could you please empty the mailbox and also put any milk on the doorstep in the fridge. The plants outside could also do with the water if you get time. So I've followed the same pattern again here with the topic sentence linking directly to the bullet point. I've used the synonym chores instead of other duties and I've then simply outlined uh, what needs to be done. Um, so. It's not a complicated paragraph, but it directly answers the question and is in nice, accurate English. I finish the letter, the letter with a closing remark. Here it reads, thanks so much for your help. Um, you don't have to include this type of sentence here, um, but it's nice if you do. Other example closing remarks could be, um, I look forward to your reply or I look forward to seeing you soon, or good luck with your future endeavours. Um, and then you sign off in the normal way. So here I've signed off, kind regards, Tim. So that is how to go about writing your letter. Let's just revisit the writing process one last time. Um, as a way to summarize what we've looked at in, in this video. So we looked at how to analyze the question and plan your answer or ideas. Um, so you're looking to do that in about four minutes. Um, remember your ideas don't have to be funny or original. They just have to be directly related to the bullet points. Your first paragraph is going to be the purpose of the letter and you'll find the purpose in the question. It will tell you why you are writing and who you are writing to. Um, your second paragraph will be covering the first bullet point and you'll simply write a topic sentence which relates directly to the bullet point and you can show off your vocabulary by using synonyms here. You'll then develop the paragraph using the ideas that you have uh, come up with um, in the planning stage. You'll then repeat this for paragraphs three and four and sign off in an appropriate way. And you should be left with two to three minutes at the end where you can read through your answer carefully and check for any mistakes you might have made. So that is the writing process and it's the one I want you to uh, follow every time you write one of these letters.